All right, Bernie Sanders went on the Joe Rogan podcast, guys. According to the last time I checked, anyway, the Joe Rogan segment with Bernie Sanders had already reached over 4 million people. Now, that's just on YouTube because the Joe Rogan himself, he has a podcast, right? The podcast, the video portion of it that we see on YouTube, that's just one element of the podcast. Okay, so for instance, I have a Friday show. You see it on YouTube. You see it on Facebook. You see it on Periscope. You see it, right? So you see it on all these platforms, right? But then there's also a podcast that goes out on iTunes and goes out on Blog Talk Radio and goes out on Stitcher Radio. So when I say that 4 million people watched Bernie Sanders' podcast with Joe Rogan or Bernie's appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast, that's a lowball number because, first of all, it's climbing. Second of all, it's only one platform that he's on. Joe Rogan's on more platforms than that. He has one of the highest rated podcasts, most watched, most downloaded podcasts in the freaking world. So there are people, there are people who expect you to listen to them and respect them and give them credibility who actually can come out of their mouth and say, I don't know why Bernie Sanders went on that podcast. Now, it would be one thing if they said, you know what? People know I'm full of crap, so I could just say what I want to say. I have no credibility. But no, these are people who want us to respect them. These are people who want us to believe in them and tune into them. And they tell us lies. It's so disingenuous. It's such a crock of BS, guys. Listen, I don't care what you do in your life, right? If it requires letting people know about it, right, and you get an opportunity to go somewhere where you don't have to pay, where you can put your thing, whether it be music, movies, video, platform for a campaign, a recipe, your novel, your blog, if you have an opportunity to put your thing Whatever it is you believe in, that thing that you fight for, that thing that you you work tirelessly up night after night to build, if you get an opportunity to go on a platform where you're going to reach millions of people, you take it. You take it. Now, one thing about the Bernie Sanders going on the Joe Rogan podcast is really distinctive is he's a politician who's running to become the president of the United States of America. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of President of the United States. The office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability. And will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. Yeah. I would venture. I, look, this is my this is my thing. I think if you are running to become the president of the United States and you turn down an opportunity to go before people, you should have. Your campaign in that day. That's right. If you're running to become president and you decide you don't need to go in front of people, you don't need to get on a platform to reach millions of people to, exp to, to share what you are offering to people, that means you don't care about the people. That means you have nothing to offer or you are phony and a fake. And you need to be seen only in short little bursts or you'll be exposed. See, a funny thing happens when you sit down and talk for a long time. The truth comes out. Yeah, the truth starts to come out after you talk for a while. See, it's one thing people put up a little short clip. Like Joe Biden, you get him talking for about three minutes. He might survive three minutes. It's about, listen, man, come on, man. Come on, listen, my, me and my buddy Barack, you know, me and buddy Barack, you know, and Michelle, we were in there cooking, you know, cookies. 
And that time, you know, I passed this thing I was doing, and I told, I told, uh, I told Barack, I said, you know, my buddy Barack, I told him, I said, you know, the world is a crazy place. Like you could, you could BS your way for a couple of minutes, but if you gotta talk to somebody like 20, 30 minutes, no commercial interruptions. Remember how Joe Biden would stop in the middle of a debate and be like, "Okay, I'm done. Thank you." Thing is, folks, look, we can deal with these insurance companies. We can deal with the insurance companies by number one, putting insurance executives in jail for their misleading. They're, they're misleading advertising, what they're doing on opioids, what they're doing paying doctors to prescribe. We, should, we could be doing this by making sure everyone who is on Medicare, that the government should be able to negotiate the price for whatever, what, what, whatever the drug costs are. We can do this by making sure that we're in a position that we, in fact, allow people. I, I, time's up. I, I just want to address the point. Actually, you can hold wait. off a minute. We need to take a short. Yeah, I think that we need to do this. We need to do that. All oh, Time's over. Okay, that's it. Oh, I think we need to do, I can solve America's problems. You'd elect me. Oh, let me stop. Okay, come. Okay, but up, up. See, that's because he didn't have anything to say. All right? When you are on a podcast that's being going to be watched by, I would venture to guess about 10 million people. That's gutsy. And this also should be mandatory if you're given the opportunity. If you are a public servant who claims that you want to preside over the executive branch of our government, which is be, become the president. All right. So that's part of my problem with this whole thing. And there are people saying that Bernie shouldn't have went on it. These are coincidentally the same people who said that Bernie shouldn't have went on Fox News. As if people on Fox News, like, I, I would suggest maybe... Maybe people who watch Fox News on a regular basis, they need Bernie to go on there more. They're the people who most need to hear Bernie because they more than likely never watch CNN or MSNBC. Because I don't think most people watch Fox and CNN. You know, because, like, you would be mad, right? Because if you're a Fox watcher, you go to watch CNN, you're like, what the hell is this? Betty, these people are crazy. They're saying that homeless people aren't homeless on purpose. Jesus, what's this? Oh, God. And that the black people getting shot, they, not, they don't deserve it? Jesus, what is this? Did you see this? I'm not watching this anymore. Bunch of communist Nazis. Their whole idea is that, you know, people need to... See, they want to keep people in their little silos because they're easier to be controlled when we're separate. When you divide us up, we're easy to be controlled. When you keep these people listening to this level of propaganda and you keep these people over here safely tucked away listening to another version of propaganda, it's easy to have them all just stupid. See? That's the idea, see? So anyway, so Bernie Sanders went on this. And and look, guys, I watched the entire podcast. I would like to encourage you to do the same. Bernie Sanders breaks down so many topics. And Joe, and Joe asked some good questions. He asked questions about policies that people care about. He asked about health care. And not only what's your plan, but how would you implement it? So Bernie had answers for his questions, not because Joe was being really super nice, just caving in, just, oh, just tell me anything, but because he actually knows his policies and he has a plan to implement them. So I enjoyed listening to it. I think that it was very productive. Those people who say shouldn't have done it, those people, are, those people are either paid off, looking for promotions at their present jobs, and they're part of the Never Bernie crew, which is a very extensive, far-reaching set, or they're just people who just repeat what they heard, okay? All the talk about Joe Rogan being too far to the right, I'm not even going to argue that because that's all about your perception of what right wing is and what it's not. I don't find him that way. He sits down, He has he's had a number of left-leaning people on his show. He did not berate them and make jokes and, you know... <laughs> 
jump up on the desk and shake his booty and, you know, smoke a blunt. You know, a sacrifice a cow. Like, he did nothing crazy. He just talked. They just talked about ideas. Dr. Cornell West was on the show. And I was like, what an amazing thing to bring on Bernie Sanders after Dr. Cornell West. And also, it's amazing that you could be, you know, you could have a relaxed conversation with these people and, and, and like, not care. Because there's, there's got to be pushback he gets on the right. Like, why are you bringing Cornell West on? He believes in... You never believe it, but he believes in there's a thing called racism. <laughs> Listen to this guy. You know, he's got people that watch him that think that. Oh, the, the kicker, Stephen, the kicker was, Cody, the kicker was he actually believes there's a thing called white supremacy. Oh, my God. <laughs> that nigga's crazy. So anyway, so Joe Rogan has a great cup podcast. It was a great episode. I enjoyed it. I thought it made uh, they made good points. Um, you might say, okay, Tim, what what was new for Bernie? What did he explain? What what was something you took away from it? One of the things I liked about it was Joe Rogan has the ability to have that you know that uh, sort of naive take on things like. You know, he asked a redundant question, like, you know, like, you already know he knows the answer, but he's, like, asking, not for himself, but for the viewer. He's like, so you mean to tell me we pay 10 times as much for some of our pharmaceuticals? But, Bernie, why is that possible? Why is it possible that we could pay so much? How is that even legal, Bernie? And Bernie's like, listen, Joe, we have lobbyists. That's the whole point, Joe. The lobbyists own our government, and they make the laws, Joe. You know, it's like, I love that part, because it's the truth. It's like, and I know Joe knows that uh, how much corruption there is in our government, but just for the average person who doesn't know this stuff, they need to hear it, because it makes no sense. I also like uh, the, uh, the part on there about gun control that I thought was very interesting, because, you know, Bernie lives in a state, Vermont, where a lot of people own guns. So they try to make him out to be this, this crazy guy. Take every gun you can get. Take it, get the gun, get the gun, get the gun, get the gun. Is that a toy gun? Give me that damn toy gun out your hand. She's doing the toy gun. Are you playing a game where there might be someone on the screen that has a gun? Give me that damn game. I'm going to burn that game too. And give me the TV that you were watching that had that on the screen with the person with the gun in the hand. Give me the TV too. Give me everything. Everything. These people, they believe this stuff because they watch Fox News or some derivative. right? So the reality is, Sort of like what Bernie said. If we influence, if we issue more restrictive gun laws, it's not going to solve all the problems. All the problems will not be solved, but it will help. I am not a magician, Joe. I can't make all of the gun deaths go away, but we have to try. We have to do our best. And see, that was respectful. That was rational and reasonable because some people, some of the left, Right, some Democrats, which Bernie is not, he's an independent. But some of these people, he's running the Democratic primary, though. But some of them just make these outrageous claims like, we're going to stop everything with one thing we do. You know, and that's, that's not realistic. And that's what I think really turns people off, is they know you ain't going to solve all the problems by doing one thing. That's when they start, that's their real knock on, like, liberalism or progressivism is they get the false impression because they have people who lie. They lie like Cory Booker, Kristen Gillibrand, Amy Cl They lie, right? They lie. Oh, we're going to solve all the problems. Oh, this time we're going to solve the problems that awake the people of America. And I listen to these people. You know, Joe, Cory Booker, so fake. You know, Amy, Amy and Kristen Gillibrand, I want to, you know. The point is, there is no magic bullet, and that's something Bernie admitted. And I think that people value the real realism. And before I leave this topic um, about Bernie on the podcast, I'll just say another thing that was refreshing about it was not only was he laid back and reasonable and they just had a good banter back and forth, was the fact that Joe ended on such a funny note about aliens. And the fact that Bernie talked about health care. He talked about 
criminal justice reform. He talked about climate change. He talked about immigration. He talked about gun reform. He talked about all of these major issues that people really give a damn about. And still, still, the joke after, after 66 minutes, the joke at the very end about aliens, there are some journalists, that's all they wrote about. Yeah, they didn't talk about all of the substance that the podcast focused on. The deep dive into serious issues for the first 64 minutes or whatever. They focused on the last 45 seconds and made an article about it. You are a piece of garbage. That's what you are. You do realize this, don't you? Make no mistake, when you look in the mirror, you look like a human being, but on the inside, garbage. In here, where a heart used to be, vacant, empty. Here, in the head, where a brain, which would be able to reason, uka, 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 a dead rat, Dead rat, drinking, drinking uh, cognac, sipping on lean. That's what's up there. That's there. That's what's up there. You are no good. You are a waste. If you are, if you, if, if you can deduce from a, an extensive conversation of full of substance and detail that matters, that matters. If you deduce all of that down to a joke at the end of a podcast. You are a horrible human being. You deserve, you deserve to be caught in a tsunami. That's what you deserve. You need to get caught in a tsunami, die a painful death, be brought back to life, healed up just to be put right back in another tsunami. To repeat that day in and day out. So uh, once again, I recommend you go watch the podcast. There are no airs. It's just a reality, a real, real conversation between two human beings. And I thought it was great, a great piece. Now, just to kind of give a little bit more context to this, on the healthcare portion, there's a, a video on the Bernie Sanders website uh, called Six Minutes to Life or Death. I'd like you to watch that. This is a vial of insulin. In the United States, it'll cost 350, 400 bucks. Here in Canada, 35 or 40 bucks. One tenth the price, made by exactly the same manufacturer. Insulin is like oxygen for a person with diabetes. And so it's a life or death matter, and people are dying. The insulin crisis in America. We really started a couple years ago. The price of insulin. It has increased in price 1,200%. Senator Sanders, when he reached out to me about doing this trip to Canada, I 100% trusted because that's what his track record shows. One in four Americans admit to rationing their insulin. It's a terrible feeling. You feel like you have the flu. You're playing Russian roulette with your life because every diabetic's different. I don't understand how anybody can get away with price gouging, seven and a half million Americans. The three major manufacturers of insulin, and they control 90% of the market. And just coincidentally, it seems that they raise their prices at about the same rate at the same time. It is collusion, it is corruption, and it is greed. People in Canada can live, people in America and some have to die because they can't afford it. I get it. I understand that you want to make money, those of you you know that are making it in the millions and billions, but why are you doing it at the cost of someone else's life? Or if they can't afford your medication, they basically can't afford to live. So many times in my life I've thought how something could have gone wrong if it wasn't for how much work and effort my parents put in. 
that uh, would I still be alive today? And I don't know. I just couldn't believe it, that there was an opportunity for me to potentially get a year's worth of insulin at a cost that would allow me to have an opportunity to save for my future. Now are we gonna make sure the individuals who are rationing their insulin never have to do that again? High blood sugars and can I call off work and maybe I can catch up later. You can't ever skip out on your insulin. You cannot ration, it does not work. Over the last 20 years, pharmaceutical industry has spent billions of dollars on lobbying Congress to make sure that they can continue to charge the American people any price they want. I saved $10,000. $1,000 got me six months of insulin for my son. These are lives. These are not just numbers. These are individuals that are, have been loved, they have friends, they have parents, they have siblings, they have cousins, they have community. And to know that vials of insulin is all that they need to stay alive, we can do something about that. We have got to make sure that every American understands what is going on within the diabetic community. We are gonna take on the greed and the corruption of the pharmaceutical industry, and we are gonna defeat them. We're gonna lower prices in America. Wow. Wow, that's a very powerful piece right there, guys. And um, I think it really hits home and it was very well put together. I just want to say one last thing before we go to the next topic. Um, most Americans agree that we need universal health care. This idea that everyone's so far apart on these issues is BS. There's just so much money involved. There's so much money pumped into the system. Bernie talks about it on the podcast. It's so much lobbyist money. It's so much special interest money. That's the reason why we don't have it now. That's the only reason why. There's not a bunch of Americans sitting around going, no, I don't think we should have health care. So instead of going after one another on this issue, just realize most people agree with you. You had them at hello. It's the lobbyists that are saying no. All right. Join the Tim Black Wolf Pack here for only $5 a month. You can become a member of the Tim Black Wolf Pack, and I'll send you a Tim Black Wolf Pack gift pack. There's bumper stickers and all other types of goodies right from your man Tim Black with independent news show that keeps it real. Doesn't lie to you. Do it today. Right here. YouTube, Facebook, and Patreon.